You said, like, you touched on and, well, concluded beautifully with the uh, sort of perennial themes throughout major religions. It was very, always very comforting for me to hear. Um, but I wanted to tie that into uh, the comparative study of central figures of the free faiths that you mm -hmm. mentioned and to ask if you found there any patterns see with the historical christ the historical muhammadan historical buddha or whatever yes. did you notice patterns uh, from the history as such as it is ascertainable and verifiable uh, of uh, of the in these cases men and then the way that they were subsequently institutionalized that would tell us something about how uh, what that transition is from a sort of mystical figure and prophet to the institutions that spring up and often become about um, kind of cybernetics and management yeah. of power this is literally my favorite topic of conversation oh, cool <laughs> Yes. So <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about Jesus, let's talk about Muhammad, and let's talk about Buddha. So first things first. All three of them in 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 neither case did either of them set out or try to start a new religion. In each case, these were people who had no other intention except to reform the religion of their of their of their land. The Buddha was not a Buddhist. The Buddha was a Hindu. He was Hindu. He had problems with Hinduism. And so he tried to reform it, specifically to find a, a middle path uh, uh, of reform. Jesus was not Christian. Jesus was a Jew. He had serious problems with the temple-focused Judaism of his time. And so he tried to reform it. Muhammad was not a Muslim. The term Islam doesn't exist in the Quran. During his lifetime, no one called themselves Muslim. They called themselves companions, you know, at best, or they called themselves Ummah, the community. That's that's basically what they called themselves. Muhammad, at no point, nowhere in the Quran, in fact, the Quran literally says, this is not a new message. This is not a new religion. It's the same message that was given to all the prophets who came before you. Their scripture is your scripture. Their religion is your religion. That's about as clear a statement as it gets that I'm not interested in starting a new religion. That's not why I'm here. I'm just here to say the way that we're doing it is wrong <laughs> and let's change it. That's all I'm that's all I want to do. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is every one of their their commandments, their thoughts, their their arguments were all economic. They were all social wow. and economic. Wow. I mean, if you look at the entire first decade of Prophet the Prophet Muhammad's preaching, because we actually it, that preaching is the Quran, and we can we can do the chronology of the Quran, so we can look at the first ten years of revelations in the Quran. There's no theology there. It's all about care for the poor and the weak and the orphan and the, the widowed, uh, that the very system that, that is in place right now is all about the exploitation of the people at the bottom. Look at Jesus. Jesus, it's funny that it, it, in the best case scenario, I told you this was my favorite topic, in the best case scenario, a modern Christian, I would hope, says that Jesus wants us to all be equal. That's a beautiful thought. But that's not what Jesus said at all. Jesus never preached equality. Jesus preached the reversal of the social order. Listen to the Beatitudes. Blessed are the hungry, for they shall be fed. Blessed are the poor, for the kingdom of God is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall uh, rejoice. Usually, we end there because no one wants to read what he says right afterwards. Because right afterwards, he says, Woe to the rich, for they have received their consolation. Woe to those who are fed, for they shall go hungry. Woe to those who rejoice, for they shall weep. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. This isn't a message of equality. This is a message of the reversal of the social order. Jesus is saying, the rich shall be poor and the poor shall be rich. And you wonder why he was crucified for it. Same with the Buddha. Do you think in that, just to pick up on that, do you think that's a revolutionary message or do you think that that's a sort of uh, an inversion of values, a suggestion that what we value and what we consider to be riches will be inverted? That's a very, that's a very good point. I mean, it's a, it's a really good point. I mean, again, you're talking about a person who was 
the poorest of the poor. I mean, we always talk about Jesus is poor, but I don't think people understand what that actually means. Jesus was a tecton, which for some strange reason we've translated as carpenter, like he's some middle class businessman with an, <laughs> with an office, like building chairs and stuff, you know, like that's that's not what tecton means. Tecton means um, artisan or day laborer. Jesus was Jesus the Mexican outside standing of outside of Home Depot. That's who Jesus was, waiting for someone to, to give him work. That's what he did. He went town to town looking for any kind of work. The Romans used the word tecton as a curse word. Um, wow. So this is about as low as it gets. Wow. In each one of these cases, you have people who are trying to reform their own situation, not create a new one, people who are interested more in, in economics and social standing than in any kind of theology, and then finally, they all die. Yes, and when yes. they die, what they leave behind is a community that now has to make sense of what just happened, and what do they do? They institutionalize it. We always wonder why you know, the institution bears so little resemblance to the founder of that institution. Why modern Christianity, if Jesus were alive today, he would have no idea what Christianity is. It would be completely foreign to him. And that's because one is is an attempt to institutionalize, you know, a, a, a prophet's thoughts. And when you do that, you you necessarily create this distance. So the perennial message, almost like the universal, we could argue, there we, that the essential truth is comparable. And then the process and results by which they are uh, institutionalized and yeah, the results of that institution, institutionalization are also, also comparable. Also comparable. So, um, I think that doesn't that sort of, uh, in a sense, highlight the absurdity and also the, the likely motivation of the idea that uh, religion and politics have to be kept discreet and distinct? Yeah. Because if you were allowed religious and spiritual ideology to fuse politics, it would completely disrupt and overthrow the way that politics is currently, currently governed because economics, fairness, distribution of resources is fundamental, uh, you know, because I'm taking you at your word, to all three of those faiths yeah which is why governments and politics always tries to control religion right the idea that christianity and capitalism have married into a single ideology is grotesque i mean if you know jesus's yeah. entire argument was anti-capitalist right i mean that was the whole point and to think that nowadays we think, oh, well, these two things go hand in hand, right? They're like the same thing. Uh, is, is, it, is, anything, is all you need to know about what we do with, with religion, how religion is about control and institutionalization. Does that mean that there's no place for religion? Again, going back to what I was saying, religion is useful in that it helps us make sense of, it helps us formulate you know what is a, a fundamental part of hu the human condition but i always go back to what the buddha said right the buddha said if you want to strike water you don't dig six one foot wells you dig one six foot well islam is my six foot well but because i just chose it that's why not because it's more right or because it's more correct or more true it's not it's because i want to get that water but what the Buddha meant, and I think this is the important thing, is that the water is the only thing that matters. And the water you're drinking is the water everybody's drinking. Mm. But pick a well. Mm. Thanks for watching this podcast and going all the way to the end of it. Would you be so kind as to click the bell? It might not be there, because over there. And uh, subscribing so that we can infiltrate your serenity and peace of mind with jangling bells and buzzes. Thank you.